One of the topics that we advise a lot on is the European Electronic Communications Code. The Code is a new European directive consolidating and reforming the framework for the regulation of electronic communication services and networks. It is applicable across the European Union, plus Iceland, Liechtenstein and Norway. The key objectives of the Code include the promotion of competition, investment and connectivity. In practice, this means that when requiring access to a dominant network, national regulators will need to ensure that the access terms, including prices, take appropriate account of the risk incurred by investing in new generation networks. There are instances in which the Code requires the ruling back of access regulation altogether. For example, this is the case for certain types of co-investments in very high capacity networks and for wholesale-only networks. Co-investment in this context includes co-ownership, long-term risk sharing, co-financing and purchase agreements. Wholesale-only networks include both functional and structural separation of a telecom operator into a netco and a retail arm. The European Commission and BEREC, the body of European regulators for electronic communications, maintain a key role in the application of the code. For example, before they can adopt proposals for network access regulation, which are capable of affecting trade between member states, national regulators must seek the review of the European Commission at Bering. Another feature of the new code is that it expands the definition of electronic communication services. The upshot of this is that services that are not currently covered by the regulatory framework will now be regulated or subject to regulation. This would include over-the-top applications or internet-based communication services. So in practical terms, the definition will now encompass communications apps, even if the service connects parties without connecting to the traditional telephone numbering system. The expanded definition will catch services like email, IP-based video conferencing, pure VoIP services, and also instant messaging. The code calls these types of services number-independent interpersonal communication services, or NIICS. NIICS will be subject to light touch regulation under the code. For example, the services will not be required to register with national authorities, they won't be required to provide access to emergency services, and they won't be required to interoperate with other communications apps or with the public telephone network. The code maintains a general authorization regime. This means that any operator can provide its services right across the EU without the need for an individual license. It doesn't, however, mean that there are no rules. The general authorization regime requires each operator to self-assess and comply with the applicable regulatory conditions under the national rules wherever it's providing services. Competent authorities may, in some jurisdictions, require the registration of certain operators as a condition to benefit from the general authorization to provide service in those territories. The use of certain radio spectrum, for example 4G or 5G spectrum, does have a continue to be subject for a need for an individual license or right of use, which is typically allocated through an auction or some other method of allocation of licenses. But the code creates a more coordinated approach to spectrum management, with a view to promoting the rollout of 5G and protecting incentives in network investment. As part of this more coordinated approach, the code makes the following changes. The duration of radio spectrum licenses for wireless broadband is increased to a minimum of 20 years to provide legal certainty and to stimulate long-term investments. There are clear rules on spectrum assignment and the renewal of licenses, and there's a regular review of radio spectrum fees. The code is also designed to enhance protection for end users by doing a number of things. So, requiring maximum harmonization in relation to consumer protection provisions, this means that member states are not allowed to impose more or less stringent provisions than those set out in the code, specifying that bundles of services that include an internet access service or publicly available NBICS have to apply certain consumer protection provisions to the whole bundle, enhancing user rights during, for example, switching of internet access services and porting of phone numbers, establishing a universal service ensuring availability and affordability of both broadband and voice communications, strengthening protection of citizens in emergency situations, enhancing security of networks and services, and capping the price for intra-EU calls. 
Member states have two years to transpose the Code International Law by 20 December 2020. In the meantime, certain provisions of the Code may have direct effect, even prior to national transposition. For example, the provisions of the intra-EU calls apply from the 1st of May 2019. Traditional services, as well as new internet-based services, will need to understand and comply with these new rules, and may also wish to participate in the public consultations for the transposition of the Code at national level and European level.